Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Really quick I just want to say a big thank you for all the people who support this channel. Whether it is by pressing like, share or subscribe. This support really helps me out to get my word out there and reach more people. In today's video, I am so excited to take a slight shift from talking about money and psychology to talk about health and exercise. And here are a couple of questions that we will answer after this video. 1. Why do you think we feel great after we exercise? And 2. Why do so many athletes deal with stressful situations by working out? And 3. Why do students who work out before their classes do significantly better than those who don't? So wait, one might ask, are you saying that we can actually feel good, get smarter and reduce stress by simply working out? And the answer is an absolute yes. And this is what we'll talk about in today's book, Spark by John Rady. Then before the end of this video, I will give you what the author recommends in terms of how much you should exercise weekly and what type of foods and supplements are best for your brain and your body. So stay tuned. John Rady is a professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. And in his book, he wanted to teach us that we don't look at exercise as it should, but we have to look at it as a must. And his argument is that if you really think about it, we are born to move just like our ancestors did hundreds and thousands of years ago. And just imagine that our ancestors had to walk 5 to 10 miles daily just to find food to eat. So the genetic makeup we possess takes thousands of years to change. And these days, we are mostly living just a sedentary life. And obviously, this is a big difference. Where very few of us move the 5 to 10 miles daily. So we need to do something to keep our biology functioning at its best. Another common thing is that we usually tend to think that exercise is only beneficial for the physical shape. Or we might think also that it's only important for the arteries and the heart. You know when people start getting older, usually they have high cholesterol. And you feel like doctors start pushing them to work out to lower their cholesterol. And don't get me wrong here, exercise has big benefits and big effects on those things. But the fact is, those are just secondary benefits. And the real benefits of exercise are primarily for the brain. And now let's get into the main takeout points of this book. So point number one is that we feel pretty good after we exercise. And this all comes out to the balance of neurotransmitters in our brain. And neurotransmitters are simply chemicals produced in our brains that makes us feel good. I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard about dopamine and its effects. And maybe some of you guys have heard about serotonin. And the message here is that one single session of exercise, specifically cardio or aerobic exercise, increases those neurotransmitters in a balanced way where we feel good and happy. This is why people who run feel what is called the runner's high. Those runners become addicted to those chemicals that are produced in the brain so that they can run for the good feeling they get after they're done. And you know, this good feeling according to multiple studies that were referenced in the book lasts for a minimum of 2 to 4 hours and in some people it could last for the whole day. And the author brings up an important problem here regarding people with psychological problems who take antidepressants. Those drugs increase the levels of dopamine and sometimes serotonin. But the problem is that they're dangerous because they're always associated with side effects. Unlike exercise where it's for free and has zero side effects. And now moving on to number two in this book. Exercise increases your capacity to learn and remember better. I don't want to get too much in detail here, but it's good to know the hippocampus structure, which is a part of the human brain that is responsible for learning and memory. When you exercise, this part is literally growing more connections of neurons, and so it grows more cells and adds more volume to your hippocampus. And another important factor is that exercise increases what's called BDNF, BDNF stands for brain-derived neutrophic factor. This fancy name refers to a protein that is responsible for protection of your brain cells as well as their constant growth. BDNF has also been shown in multiple studies to fight depression and anxiety, and it is found in many antidepressants. But as we said earlier, remember that it's naturally produced through exercise and it is for free. BDNF also influences neuroplasticity and neurogenesis two new fancy terms. Neuroplasticity simply means the ability of your brain to constantly change and develop. And neurogenesis is simply the ability of your neurons or cells to produce more branches 
and eventually create more cells and more neurons. And now let's move on to point number three in this book and talk about how exercise reduces your anxiety and boosts your attention and focus. The part of the brain that is responsible for attention and focus is called the prefrontal cortex and it's located in the front part of your brain. The author recommends that you work out early in the morning for a couple of reasons. One is that you, when you exercise in the morning, you reduce your cortisol levels. Cortisol is basically the stress hormone in your body. And reducing cortisol is associated with increasing dopamine and serotonin. And this will make you feel happier and push you and motivate you to work. Another benefit of exercising in the morning is that it doubles the amount of blood flowing to the prefrontal cortex. And once you have more blood in this area in the brain, then it functions better. And this explains the increased levels of attention and focus. And this actually answers one of the questions we asked at the beginning of the video, which was why students who work out before their classes do significantly better than those who don't. So now you know that exercising in the morning will multiply your benefits for a better and more productive day at work. Moving on to point number four and the last one in this video, which is exercise helps your body utilize energy more efficiently. And this is the reason why doctors usually recommend exercise for diabetics and especially type 2 diabetics. Type 2 diabetes usually happens when insulin receptors on the body cells become resistant to insulin. And this happens due to overeating of carbohydrates and the accumulation of fat. And for the people who don't know, insulin is just a hormone produced through your pancreas to manage the levels of your blood sugar after you eat. So what does exercise have to do with diabetes? Well, exercise triggers production of more insulin receptors, and this will make the body more sensitive to insulin, and having more receptors means better use of glucose. And what I mean by this is that when the glucose gets into the cells, then the blood sugar is corrected and the energy is being used more efficiently. Just one last thing worth mentioning before I move on to the next point. A study was published in Queen's University in Canada concluded that there was no correlation between exercise and weight loss. Some people exercise really hard and don't see results, so they get depressed. But the problem here isn't concerning exercise, it is concerning the diet they follow. Exercise can increase your body mass and boost your metabolism and insulin sensitivity. This will set your body up for a healthy shape. But remember that for body weight purposes, your diet should be taken care of first. Moving on to the last part of this video, let's talk about the recommendations of how much you should exercise weekly or what's the least you can do to get those benefits of exercise. The author recommends that you do 4 days a week of cardio for a minimum of 30 minutes and on 60 to 65% of your maximum heart rate. And to calculate your average maximum heart rate, all you do is take 220 minus your age. Let me give you an example here. So for me, I would take 220 and subtract 22 from it, I will get 198. So to calculate 60% of my max heart rate, I will multiply that number times 60% or 0.6 and I will get about 120. So I should be training at a heart rate of 120 for a minimum of 30 minutes. And if you want to do strength training like weightlifting or doing resistance training, then the author recommends a minimum of 2 times a week and make sure you do 3 sets of each exercise with a range of 10 to 15 repetitions. Another option would be balance and flexibility exercises, also twice a week for a minimum of 30 minutes and examples on that are yoga, martial arts and dancing. And finally, don't forget the mental exercises such as reading and taking courses. And now let's move on to the foods and supplements that the author recommends. And what stood out the most to me are as follows. In food, things like cumin, garlic, onions, and broccoli. He also focused on blueberries, spinach, and beets. And he stressed on things like green tea, omega-3 rich foods such as salmon, tuna, and cod. And in terms of supplementation, he recommends what's called EPA, DHA, vitamin D, vitamin B, and folate. So before I end this video, I just want to say that those were just the big takeout ideas from this book. I couldn't include everything here just for the sake of time for the video, but if you'd like to learn more about exercise and the neuroscience of the brain, please feel free to pick up a copy of the book, and I have a link for that down in the description below. And again, I want to thank you guys so much for all the support, 
and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. See you next time.